Well, the first thing I'd like to say is clearly salmon in the Pacific Coast are really important to Canadians and British Columbians. If you think of the different interests that we have in them, it's commercial fisheries, recreational First Nations fisheries, there's tourism, there's the importance of these salmon for feeding other species ranging from killer whales to eagles. Salmon are strange beasts because they have this life cycle that takes them through a large variety of habitats. Everything from freshwater to the estuaries to the sea. That means that anything that we do that could be harmful in any of those habitats can potentially have a real knock-on effect on these fish. Managing it with uncertainty, I think uh, a good example is last year Fraser Sockeye, we had a forecast of about 10 million fish that were going to return to the Fraser River system. Well, what did happen is that we had a record return. We had uh, 30 million plus fish return. Did we anticipate that? No. Our science forecast had a large range around that, but even that uh, large return was on the upper end of that, uh, of that forecast. So what, did we, what, what do we do is don't just rely on a forecast. You have in-season tools that go out and collect information. So it's been adaptive uh, to changing circumstances. Often you will have different subpopulations that will migrate, for example, at the same time, and you cannot easily distinguish between those in a fishery. You will catch some fish that are just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if they come from a small stock which has low productivity, and they're up against it with a very large stock that is the main target of the fishery, they can run into trouble. Well, how well is the ecosystem doing? If uh, wild salmon are doing fine, then probably other things in the ecosystem are doing fine. We know from experiences in other par parts of the world, such as Alaska, that the relative importance of different stocks of fish can change over time. So for example, it, under climate change, which is very much with us and we're seeing all sorts of effects already, there are certain types of stocks which might be better able to withstand these changing conditions than other ones. And so if we lose the diversity, we lose our ability to um, capitalize on different stocks coming into their own as others might fade out in this you know, growing changes. So the wild salmon policy, you know, is very clear, I think, on uh, laying out a, a strategy for what the what one is going to protect for the salmon. It lays out how you would measure that, and it also lays out how you would plan for it. The core of the wild salmon policy is conserving the diversity of salmon at a level that's appropriate that allows their long-term persistence and survival. That's the core element. Everything else is about supporting that and making that happen, from ecosystem integration, habitat protection, and developing recovery plans for these conservation units, which is the unit of diversity that the wild salmon policy demands we protect. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans went through this long process of consultation, came up with a consensus statement of, of what the priorities are. We've made uh, good progress in a num number of areas within BC of implementing the policy, but it, I would say um, it's not going as fast as some would like to, s like to see us. Um, see it implemented and for others it's probably going too fast. To kick it into a higher gear uh, the main issue there is the amount of funding that's available to the Department of Fisheries and Oceans uh, to actually make it happen. We've seen remarkable changes. I mean changes in the way that the fisheries are managed, you know obviously the, the sustainability movement. How do we design a fishery so that not only the fish are sustainable but the fishermen are sustainable too. The most difficult thing about me surviving is having to adapt all the time. You look at every year and you say, what can I do different from last year? We're connecting the consumer to the fishermen and it, it brings a sense of pride to the fishermen. Be able to go on the website and, and, and look at his bio, they can actually get reports on how many hits they've had. So he knows that the consumer in Toronto is is eating his halibut and uh, he puts a little bit more care and attention into it to ensure that the quality product coming off that vessel is, is of the highest quality. There's a lot of eco brands out there that say uh, this is okay, this is middle of the road, this is not so good and that makes it extremely difficult for a consumer to make a conscious decision of, of the purchases they make. We need to make it a lot easier for them to understand uh, what is good and what is bad and just make it very clear for them, and that's through education, and make it very simple for them to make those great choices.